Hey there, this is Mindy Lighthype, and I am passionate about nature. Since I was a little kid, I have always been fascinated by nature, and as an adult, I've put my passion to paper as a nature artist. Drawing is a skill that can be mastered. Here are 12 essential concepts I use every time I am drawing the beauty of nature. So here we go, let's go and take a look. The first thing is that I believe you should draw from life. I cannot stress this enough. Honing your observation skills and getting to know your subjects are more easily done from life. Too often I see people tracing over photographs without really understanding the anatomy of the plant or the animal. Photography can be a welcomed addition to researching and capturing details, especially if your subject is prone to wilting. But working only from photos is not to your advantage. Photos can have depth of field issues, they can be out of focus, and important information can often be missed by the camera. So my recommendation is that you draw from life and draw often. Think about keeping a, a sketch journal. Number two, it's really important to know your eye level. Understanding the viewpoint you are looking at as you draw is crucial. Be consistent in maintaining this viewpoint throughout the entire drawing. Subjects are mostly drawn at on or below the eye level. Keep this in mind at all times to make sure that you're not peeking around the corner. When you peek around the corner, it's a different viewpoint every time and you will only distort your drawing and make it out of proportion and scale. Number three, draw through overlapping objects. In your preliminary drawings, and I work on tracing paper, Make sure that you draw the background object through the foreground object. This will lead the eye through the composition and ensure all the objects line up properly and read correctly. You can erase any overlapping lines in the final drawing before adding detail and form. You can also change your mind and bring an object forward if you want. For instance, in this drawing here, I could have brought the peach forward having the leaf behind. So make sure that when you're drawing that you draw through and then erase anything where it is overlapping. Number four, make sure you have a sharp pencil. Having a sharp pencil is going to give you an advantage. Keep your pencil sharp whether you're using the side of it to layer or the point of it for the details. The surface area will be greater when you're using the side of the pencil to apply wide flat areas than if you used a rounded nub. Details will have precision crisp lines when the pencil point is sharp. Invest in a good pencil sharpener. Stay away from those little handheld sharpeners. They do not give you a good enough point. I recommend the Repesco 64 sharpener and it's available through Amazon.com. Just click on the link here. Number five, one of my favorite tools, the kneaded eraser. And one of my mottos is that you need to knead your kneaded eraser. Kneading is done by pulling the eraser apart and sticking it back together, very much like a taffy pull. When you knead it, any graphite that is on the surface is redistributed to keep it clean and pliable. You will use your kneaded eraser to lighten or lift up tonal values. Any other eraser will erase most of the graphite and perhaps damage or change the surface tooth of the paper and revert it back to the white of the paper. Use this kneaded eraser to lift or blot areas that may have gotten too dark. It's a great tool, and remember, you need to knead your kneaded eraser. Number six, put your details in last. Start your drawings with simple shapes. Make sure your overall shapes, measurements, and proportions are correct before going into any kind of detail. It is important to get the underlying structure correct. Another motto is that your finished drawing is only as good as the foundation. Once the foundation drawing is secure, you can add the detail. Details are the icing on the cake. Make sure all the ingredients are there before you proceed and save them for last. Tip number seven, know the surface contour. Think of the surface contour as the topographical map of your subject. It is the terrain which shows you where the undulations, the concave and convex areas are. 
It helps you understand how the subject turns in space and how it grows. Always follow the surface contour when you are applying form and detail. If necessary, rotate the paper as you work to make it easier to follow the surface contour. You'll be glad you did. Number eight, remember that light advances and dark recedes. An object that is lighter will always come forward in a composition. Here, the white and the black circles are exactly the same size. The white circle looks bigger and the black one looks like it's a dark hole. When you want an object to pop or come forward in a composition, make sure the background is darker to create depth, especially when you have overlapping subjects that touch each other. Number nine, do not create heavy outlines. When drawing your subjects, make sure the outlines, as well as the detail lines, are not too dark. If the outline is too dark, it will look like a coloring book outline and lack form. The outside line or edge of your subject should have the same tonal value as the interior. If your lines are too dark, lift them with your kneaded eraser before you begin toning and don't forget to knead your kneaded eraser. Number 10, always work with a consistent light source. It's important to have a consistent light source throughout your composition. The industry standard for botanical and scientific illustration is light coming from the upper left at 45 degrees from the picture plane. Imagine the light source in your mind's eye or set it up in your studio. I use an OT light which duplicates natural daylight. The shadows and highlights will be soft with this kind of light. Do not use a halogen bulb as they are very harsh. You can get the OT light through this link at Amazon.com. Number 11, let's talk about highlights versus reflected highlights. Highlights are located where the light directly hits the object. It is the brightest part of the object regardless of color or surface texture. Reflected highlights are secondary. They are caused by light hitting a surface like a table and bouncing back upward. They are subtle and often glow at the base or underside of the subject. Both will conform to the surface contour but will be different in shape because of their location to the light source. On the sphere, the highlight is round and the reflected highlight is a crescent shaped. Number 12, correct errors. Eliminate making mistakes. If you're unsure where to put a shadow, how long to make it, or which direction it should be, do not ruin your drawing by putting it into the composition without experimenting first. Use a piece of tracing paper and place it over your drawing. Draw through your subject and practice where to position shadows. You can also use tracing paper to correct drawing errors before committing to the final composition. If it doesn't look right, do not go to the final composition until it does. In conclusion, again, your final drawing is only going to be as good as your foundation drawing. Keep these 12 basic principles as part of your artistic discipline and use them every time you draw. If you're interested in learning more about drawing, botanical, and natural science subjects, please visit my website at www.mindylighthype.com. I currently offer online classes and would love the opportunity to work with you so that you too can enjoy drawing the beauty of nature. I hope you have enjoyed these 12 essential tips. Please feel free to download them as a PDF where you can print them out or keep them on your computer or mobile device. There is a link at the bottom of this page. Take care, and I hope to see you on the web.